I tried to condense down seven trips into one spreadsheet. So it wasn't uh, easy, and uh, I'm gonna project that later, but I'm gonna give you uh, one of those so you can kind of see depending on what trip you're interested in. And it's all color coded. So if you see pink, you know that is a Malawi trip for May. And if you see, uh, you know, light tan, it means Malawi plus Melange in July, and uh, so on and so forth. So the colors are all coordinated throughout the, the entire um, list there, okay? So my, that's a geoscientist in you. <laughs> Are you a geoscientist? Too? No, engineer. Okay, well, well, I mean, I get an engineer. Oh, oh sorry. No, here, here, here. It seemed like there was somebody I didn't get to. Oh, no. oh that's what happened. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, so that you're right. I mean, my, my dad told me, the one thing you always want to tell your kids growing up is you love them, you're proud of them, and you're really good at it. So my dad kept telling me, you're really good at math, you should become an engineer. Well, I, my degree, both bachelor's and master's in engineering geoscience, but okay, I ended up yeah. becoming a psychologist. But I think at heart, I'm an engineer. Uh, so it's, <laughs> it's funny that you point that out. I, I love Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> so, um, so let's show. Uh, Mike, you don't have to talk. Oh, you're going to have to talk about the, the sound in this room doesn't okay, carry very well. I got this. Because it's open. Important. Oh, this isn't bad. Yeah, so I can, I can, so, where are we at, Bill? Okay. Have we started recording yet? Okay. Can we expand it one? Yeah, you can expand it. Make it a green thing. thing. To unexpand it, you'll hit that again. Okay, so can you hear me? Okay. Um, for those that came just a little bit after, the one before, a little bit after 1.30, I was talking about some of these displays around here. Um, this, this one here, the one behind over there, the furthest one over, is the project that we uh, stay at in Malawi. Whether you go on a Malawi mission trip only, or if you go to Kilimanjaro and then come down to Malawi afterwards, that, that's where we stay. It's an incredible facility. Part of our time there will be a tour of all that. And then this thing uh, says Prairie Peak and Purpose. You got a lion at the bottom, you got a hike, a, a peak, sunrise in the middle, and then you have the purpose uh, of the whole thing, bringing clean water to Malawi. And then there's a map that shows uh, some bad water on the right, plus an aerial view of the project uh, kind of in the middle to the right of that whole long skinny country called Malawi. And then on the left, there's kids at two different wells where the well's now been repaired. The very top is a little aerial view of, of Kilimanjaro. One of my favorite pictures I've ever taken of Kilimanjaro was on an iPhone like four or something like that back in 19, 2000, uh, 2012. Um, and then it, the map on the left is of Africa, kind of shows you where Malawi is, and also shows you where Zimbabwe is, another part of Africa where Child Legacy works, and actually that's where they started in uh, 35 years ago. Um, and then on the ground here, uh, we always look for ministry partners that will support some of the expenses, like shirts for the climbers and uh, swag for people who give $150 or more. So these are all it, it, these are all the sponsors we had for uh, 2022, and we'll take this banner to the top of Kilimanjaro. We'll take it to the to Everest Base Camp. Whatever trip we're on, whatever hike, we'll take this banner to to um, advertise these various organizations and companies and so forth uh, and give them credit for what how they've helped us. And then over uh, past all these uh, uh, big posters here are uh, three um, panoramas that I took at the top of Kilimanjaro in 2013. Uh, and that shows pretty much what it's gonna look like unless you have a really odd year, like we had in 2018 where they had a massive snowfall two days before we got there. Uh, that's a whole other, that's the picture in the middle on this Prairie Peak Purpose uh, uh, poster is actually from that hike. And then on the far wall over there are a bunch of panoramas of Everest Base Camp uh, views that you would have if you went on the Everest Base Camp trip, which we're leaving for in two weeks. Um, let's see, is there anything else like that I want to say? No. So, I want to show, Bill, let's go, we can minimize that. I'm going to show you just a really quick uh, video that one of our climbers uh, put together for us from uh, this year's Kilimanjaro hike. Far left, top, upper left corner. Okay, here we go. Let me, uh, let me uh, maximize it.
start off with an acclimatization safari. So we call it prairie. We stay at a lodge at 7,800 feet to get acclimated from the beginning of the hike in three days, which is also 7,800 feet. Then we go down the hike, start off in a beautiful forest, then you get above the forest. show you, um, let's go to the next one, because that's also somewhat different. Go to the, the second one on the, on the list. That, that, that one, yeah. Let's show that one. It's a little longer video, but it tells you a little bit more. Um, there you go. That's a Karanga camp, uh, the morning of day six. And it's a big camp. It's lots of different guide companies there, lots of different and, uh, and that's that's the view you when actually I get first from sent my uncle. first fundraising letter out to potential donors I said this is going to be the hardest thing I've ever done for the biggest problem in Africa and it's either going to be a disaster or, or God's going to bless it uh, so the clean water climb is was started in 2011 uh, with a, a climb of Mount Kilimanjaro we decided to take on uh, the world's highest freestanding mountain and also the highest mountain in Africa uh, to raise money for Child Legacy's water well ministry. And it's perfect representation of, you know, very difficult hike, and yet it represents a very difficult problem in Malawi, which is the lack of clean drinking water. So it started in 2011, and uh, after, after four trips to Africa, <laughs> I finally found this organization called Child Legacy, and um, I met. And they, they had taken me out to a well repair in 2009. I started bringing people in 2010, and then I met a guy on a plane that had climbed Kilimanjaro to raise money for a charity when I was on my way back in 2010. So that got the wheels turning, and I decided, well, why not climb Kilimanjaro for clean water in Malawi, Africa, for Child Legacy? So I recruited people, and we've been doing it ever since. So this is the 12th annual Mount Kilimanjaro Clean Water Climb. We're near the end of the trip. We have been fixing water wells for a couple of days. We got a tour of Child Legacy's project. And at every well repair, not only do we bring clean water, but we share Bible stories, very, very important key Bible stories in the New Testament about Jesus and his powers and his miracles and his commands. And so we've been doing that at each well repair. This is the fourth one and final one we'll do on this trip. But I'd love to have you join us in a future trip and all you have to do is go to cleanwaterclimb.net slash contact but you can check out the website and if you want to ask questions about future trips go to that slash contact for the hike uh, we do the, what we call the Lamosha route, and I use the same guide company, Zara Adventures, and I have the same guide every year. So we've got a great relationship. They love what we're doing. We bring them clients, and um, so they, they're very supportive. But you don't have to carry hardly anything on the hike, okay? You have a day pack with water. Maybe you have a fanny pack with, with snacks. You put your cell phone in there. You don't carry very much at all. I mean, unless you want to, but there's no reason to because they provide all of that. They provide the porters, they provide the tents, they provide all the meals, they cook for us. We have a dining room tent for every meal. Practically every meal on the mountain is in a dining room tent. Certainly breakfast and dinner and sometimes even lunch, they set up a dining room tent on the way up on that day. So it's an eight day hike total, seven days up and one day down with a complete support of guides, porters, cooks, camp hosts, and so on. So we've officially started the hike? We've officially started the hike. How's everyone feeling? 
I can't even talk, I'm so out of breath. Oh, yeah, just did. I have seen God's grace on this. We, you know, like I said, ten, all 10 of us that left Final Base Camp made it that first year. We raised $50,000 the first year. That was enough to repair 50 wells. And on average, a, a, a well might serve 2,000 people. So we brought water to whatever that is, 200,000 people. Water cleaned up right away. 20,000. Yeah. It was settled yeah. in the bottom of the, the That well. very first year. And I thought, okay, I've seen God at work here. And he obviously blessed it, and he wants me to do it again. And believe me, when I was coming down that first year, near the top, I said, why in the world did I call this the first annual clean water climb? Because it was tough, right? But God blessed it because people got behind it. And so many people got clean water that I, I, I've seen God work through the clean water climb. I mean, since the clean water climb started in 2011, over 3,000 water wells have been sponsored by all the different fundraisers, all the different donors to all the different fundraisers. Like, so everybody that goes on a trip is a fundraiser. And uh, we give them all the tools to write their bio, get their photos, give them a link on a website, and we make it as easy peasy, lemon squeezy as possible for them to fundraise for clean water. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just give you a, I, I gave you another handout. So let's go to, uh, Go to uh, go, go back on this. So click on this, and uh, there should be a back button. Yeah, there you go. Okay, go to um, that right there. Yeah, I want to I want to bring this up and, and have this one handy. So it's color coded to um, different trips. So the gray at the very top is South America, and that's coming up really soon. In fact, on the original info sheet, and I, I have flyers here. Uh, if you got one two Sundays ago. Uh, there's slight corrections, so uh, be sure to get one for the trip that you're interested. I don't have them laid out yet, but anyway. Um, so the very first one is South America, and I realized when I put the, uh, the first meeting, the first more or less mandatory meeting, uh, we call them, because it's good for team building, I made it on January 21st, and then when I looked at the South America trip, I realized, well, I'm not going to be here, so I had, I had to change it to, to February 4th. So anyway. If you, as you go across, you'll see, okay, those are the dates, January 9th to 22nd, 14 days, about $4,100. We'd like to have six people to get that price. Commitment date is uh, November 18th, and deposit 1000 and waivers are due um, the same day, okay? And then the estimated economy airfare right today, or yesterday, when Kevin Talley sent me this, is $830. Now, on the handout I gave you, it has the trip leader, the Facebook name of that trip leader, and then also an email address and a mobile. But I didn't want to put this because this is going to be on YouTube, but I didn't want to give out that information just for the whole world to see, right? And then so you so you have that's kind of the trips as you go across, and then the meeting schedule. Um, we'll have a meeting on uh, on, on February fourth, and I call that uh, the fundraising one one. So this is where we'll we'll teach you all about fundraising, all the things I've learned over the last, not even just 12 years, but I, I was doing the BPMS 150 for four or five years before I even started this. So I learned a little bit about fundraising doing the BPMS 150 cycling ride from Houston to Austin that I that I then took and I brought it to another level. But we'll talk about all of that at, at that meeting, February 4th, um, 3.30 to 5.30. I think I'm gonna have all, right now I'm planning on having all the meetings at my house. Uh, in the woodlands. So if you live, you know, if you got to this meeting, you should be able to get to the one in the woodlands uh, at my house. And then we'll have a, a bios due. And so on, on the 18th, I want to give two people, uh, to, uh, everybody two weeks to prepare those bios after we talk about fundraising 101. And then they could, you know, try to get the bios to me. A bio would be just a little description, and you'll hear more about it, but a little bit about yourself, your family, and why you want to do this, right? And then we'll need a headshot and like a family hiking or mission kind of kind of picture. Of, of, of you and your family or, who, or with a group of people doing a mission trip or something. Just something that will go on your personal page. And then we'll have equipment and training. So for all the trips, except for Ecuador, I mean, if anybody's interested in Ecuador, you need to let me know right away, and then I'll pass it on to Kevin, and he'll be in touch with you because he's leading that trip. But um, the rest of the trip, <laughs> all, all these other ones, Kilimanjaro, Everest Base Camp, Melange, which is the highest mountain in Malawi, uh, and Colorado, uh, all those, You'll come to this meeting on March 4th, and we'll go over all the equipment you need for these trips, okay? <clears throat> backpack and stuff like that. And I've got, a, I've got a backpack up here and a couple of key items in that I'll, I'll pull out towards the end of the meeting. And then we'll have an Africa prep meeting, 
Uh, so anybody that's going on one of the Africa trips would be Kilimanjaro, the, any, the Malawi mission, and then if you want to do the hike at the end of the Malawi mission, we call it Malawi, Malawi plus Melange. Um, those three trips, I'll tell you everything you need to know about preparing for Africa in general, especially if you've never been there. If you've been there, you probably already know about getting anti-malaria pills and stuff like that. But uh, And then Bible Story 101. Um, we share Bible stories uh, in Malawi uh, when we go. And... Um, uh, and a couple things I'm going to I'm going to mention I'll mention uh, one of these things early. So we have flashcards and there's five stories on here. Jesus calms the storm. Jesus uh, uh, casts the demons out of the garrison demonic. And then uh, Bartimaeus, the blind beggar, he heals. And then he tells Nicodemus he must be born again. We just had a great sermon on that today at church. And then the last one is the woman at the well. So Jesus is a Jew. She's a Samaritan. He strikes up a conversation with her and leads her down a path to the point where she realizes he's the Messiah. So we have flashcards, make it easier for people to memorize. You don't have to memorize all five, but we usually like you to memorize two or three of them. We have a big team, and you may only get a chance to share one story, it just depends. Uh, and then we, the, new, the great thing we did this year was we translated them all into the local language of Chichewa. So now you have to memorize them in Chichewa. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, so we give these to the chief at the end. We give them several of these sets, and we tell them, okay, we've shared these stories. We've memorized them and shared them with you to tell you about all the, th all the attributes of Jesus, you know, all these different things. He's more powerful than nature. He's more powerful than demons. Uh, he can heal people. You know, he's, he reveals himself to, to the Samaritan woman as knowing everything about her past. So he knows all things, and, and he tells her he's the Messiah. And, of course, uh, with Nicodemus born again. So we, we're get, we give them the same five stories. So for those that do read, they can memorize these and then share with their other villagers or other villages. We want to teach them how to be evangelists, right? So this is something new we did for 2022. Very excited about that. And while I'm on that subject, we also, Church Project, bought 30 of these village pearl players, solar powered, but you can also, you can also plug them, you can also plug them in uh, to, if you have electricity, but 99% of the villages won't have electricity. So these are solar powered, and they've got the entire Bible in English and Chichewa, plus 43 discipleship lessons. Mm. So they can start studying God's word and get discipled by just, and, and this thing is so powerful. It's got a 15 watt speaker. 200 people can hear this thing. It's unbelievable. Who makes that thing? Okay, right up in Conroe, the Digital Bible Society. So the Digital Bible Society and Woods Edge Church, which is another church in the woods, got together and um, they, after several iterations, came up with this. And, and by the way, they have this in many languages, but not the discipleship lessons. The only language they have those 43 discipleship lessons are is in Chichewa. So I would love to get Bruce, our guide, over here from Tanzania and have him record the 43 discipleship lessons in Swahili. Then that opens up millions more people, right? And then also the guide that we use for um, Everest Base Camp, he's Nepalese. He does come to the States once in a while. I already told him about this. I already sent him the lessons. And he's, I'm going to see if he'll translate those into Nepalese or whatever the language is called. And then we'll have the 43 discipleship lessons in that language. And so I'm very excited about this. So um, our pastor at Child Legacy in, in Malawi, Pastor Johan Chikwatu, um, we gave him 30 of these. And on the side is his contact information. So when we went to the villages this year, he went with us and translated our five stories. And then at the end, he gave out these to each uh, chief and explained to him in detail how you, how you do it. But he's got his contact information on here, and it's not very far from where um, these villages tend to be fairly close, uh, within you know two-hour drive at the most. And so he can go and, and say, okay, I understand you're having a problem. Let me come out there if I can't explain to you over the phone. So there, we don't just give somebody something with, with no instructions. We give them the instructions and so on and so forth. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. And What kind of feedback have you gotten from them? Well, we, we were just there in July, oh, okay. and I'm, I'm waiting for some feedback. I actually asked uh, Pastor Johan to um, go back to those villages. And, you know, I mean, he hasn't said, like, well, they called up. They couldn't figure out how to use it. So I'm, I'm curious. Uh, I told them, can you give us some feedback? It's a very good question. Um, okay. Mike, can I just clarify something? Yes. So Child Legacy and their guys that are trained to repair water wells, they repair wells 
much further away than two hours away. Right. Right. right? It's yep. just when when we're there, we go to ones that are within a few hours. I think we even did some that were three or four hours. Yeah, we, we might they, have, they try to yeah. do where you're not like in a car yeah. right? Like so that. But but when you do go, you can go to like multiple villages. So it's good. Cool. It's usually worse sitting in the car because then you get to reflect with the others on what you saw and yep. how the people were yep. so receptive and kind. And I just wanted to, it yeah, made it sound like it was very centralized. Yeah, so I yeah. wanted to. Yeah, no, I mean, you can see they repaired wells yeah, way up there all the way to there. And they've actually done some in the lake on islands in the lake, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. This is Lake Malawi. Um, but all these dots, yeah. So here's the catchment area, which is like 50. The 65,000 people that this project serves in terms of the medical and all that stuff, but it's the entire country. Now, you know, and we don't have a lot of time when we're there. We may go out to Wells two days or three at the very most, and so we don't have a whole lot of time to, to drive really far distances. So they'll they'll try to you know find something that recently broke within within you know two to three hour drive. But yeah. But we even went to one that had been broken for like three or four months. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you could tell. Yep. you could tell a difference. We had gone to one that had been broken for a few weeks and one that had been broken for a few <coughs> months. And the beep, or maybe it was a couple of years, I think. Oh, because there's it no, was some, one of the Woods yeah. Edge ones. Yeah, sometimes but, um, they're pretty far away. And, and they're, you yeah. could tell a significant difference in the health of those villagers that mm. hadn't had clean water mm. in a couple of years to those that it had been broken just a few months. It was a few months versus a few years. I mean, it was like significantly different. They were, they felt they just weren't smiling as much, like their kids were much sicker, the people were much, you know, you could tell they were all had, you know, uh, just not as healthy, looked looked gaunt. And so it was just, it was interesting to see, you know, the, the impact from that. So. so when you say wells are broken, do you take spare parts? Or what really yeah, so, breaks? Yeah, what we do so is, we, um, uh, I think, um, in the video it said, you know, we raised 50,000 the first year and that repaired 50 wells. Well, that was when, in 2011, and even 12, 13, 14, 15, we were able to keep the price at 1,000. So it had to bump up to 1250 in 2016, I believe it was, because of inflation. And we, what we do is we get $250 of the 1250, out of every 1250 we uh, receive from donors, goes in a fund that at the end of the year, they order another container of parts from India. So all the parts come, like 300 kits will come from India, and so you, you, you know, to buy them, and then you ship them across the Indian Ocean, and you have to, to Mozambique, and then you drive it up to Malawi. So all that is part of the, of that, uh, of, of the 1250, right? But 250 buy, actually buys the container, and, um, and then the rest of the money is for the crew and fuel, and I don't know, I'm, I'm worried we're gonna have to raise it a, a little bit more in 2023, because as you know, fuel prices have gone crazy, you know? Um, but so yeah, we get all the parts from India to answer your question and uh, yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the meeting schedule and it's, again, it's all color coded. If you're interested in Kilimanjaro, you just look at the, 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 the gray or whatever that color is there and you'll see you know, the dates and, and everything like that and it'll be like at my house in the Woodlands. Payment schedule. Kind of the same thing. I tried to now in Ecuador. It's it's early, right? Because I mean, January's not too far around the corner. If anybody's really interested in Ecuador, and let me tell you, Cotopaxi is one of the two. So there's four. We're going to do four volcanoes, and uh, two of them will be relatively easy, and then Cotopaxi and Chimborazo will be the two harder ones. And Cotopaxi is seven feet higher than Kilimanjaro, and it's the world's tallest active volcano. So that's going to be interesting. Uh, and then Chimborazo, it's right on the equator, very close to the equator in Ecuador. So if you make it to the top of Chimborazo, it's only like 20,000 feet, a little bit more. You're actually further from the center of the earth than you are if you get to the top of Everest because of the earth has a bulge. Earth is not a perfect sphere, it's a, like oblate. And it's, it's, it's you know, bigger at the, at the, at the equator, the, the radius is greater. So if you make it to the top of Chim Chimborazo, you'll be closer to the sun than even if you were on top of Everest and further from the center of the earth. So I'm excited about that trip, but it's coming up quick. And uh, Kevin and I already decided we're gonna do it if nobody joins us even, but, 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 to, but we'll have to pay a little bit more than the $4,100. So deposits due on uh, November 18th. And then you can see for, for Killy, I'm, I'm thinking fit, uh, uh, the fourth of, uh, so I try to take these payments and tie them into the meetings, right? So you see, Take a look at Equipment and Training 101, Kilimanjaro, March 4th. If you go over here, March 4th, deposit due. 
So I, I coordinate the, the payments with the meetings, right? So it just makes it easier for everybody. And, and all the payments are gonna be by a check made out to Child Legacy because the entire trip is tax deductible. If you itemize your donations and, and tax, you know, tax deductible things, if you itemize, this trip um, qualifies because it's a fundraiser. Because it's a fundraiser, our, our CPA said we can write everything off, even the acclimatization safari before we go up Kilimanjaro because it's necessary to be successful on the hike itself, right? So um, that, that's, why it's, that's why if you run it all through Child Legacy, it's great. Now, as far as the, um, the airfare, which I have estimates up there, you can see estimated economy <coughs> airfare kind of near the middle. So you can see the, the different prices. I just got three of those yesterday from the um, travel agent. We use a travel agent and uh, it's, it's really strange how he works, but he'll, like anybody who like, okay, I'm ready for Kilimanjaro and I'll tell them and we can book your flight tomorrow. You won't pay for it until about a month before the trip. I mean, I don't know how he does this with the airlines, but he literally does not charge your credit card until shortly before we go. And everybody's always in a panic and telling him, my, my credit card, he has a charge for her flight, am I going? And I, I keep having to reassure him, I don't understand how he does it. But he tells me that he keeps like rebooking. Like anytime he sees a price drop, he'll rebook us mm. and then he'll get rid of the old booking. And so it, he just keeps doing that. And then, I mean, the group that went to, um, Malawi this year, I think we thought it was gonna cost about two grand, and it ended up being like 1,700. So I, I, again, I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And so that's why this, this stuff up here, Brian will not charge your CC until the last few weeks before the trip. So any of you that do end up going on the trip, don't panic, just remember this spreadsheet, okay? Um, so anyway, we, we'll get your credit card information, I'll give it to him. Now, if you wanna to talk to him like, oh, that airline I've got a zillion points on, okay? That's great, he'll, he'll figure that out for you and get you booked through your points, okay? So it's really good to have one guy, he, and he's a one-man company, and he just works out of his house, and he's been doing, he's been doing it for me since 2009. He's um, very good. So what? He's very yeah, good. Yeah, he's very good. He, he's very good at figuring, and, and he knows what we do every year, so he knows the issues that we have and stuff like that, and we gotta get to a certain place by a certain date and everything, so he's really good about that, but anyway, so you got the you got the general costs and and you know like when deposits are due and you know who the who the leaders are and all that stuff and then the same thing down here meetings and then payment schedule. So does anybody have any questions kind of just about that in general? Because um, I'd like to show a few more videos and uh, mm -hmm. of, of some of these different trips to to whet your appetite. So I have a question. Yes. So we pay the deposits down here with the checks. Yes. And and then the, like the flight you pay in the hotels? Well, the hotel will be part of that check. So all the expenses, everything, uh, food, hotel, guide fees, safari, everything will be run through uh, a child legacy checks. Okay. The only, only thing you do not pay by a check, and, and those prices up there are all inclusive, essentially. They're, 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 there's gonna be very little. And you know what, no, I, I need to say this, I need to say this because he had a, we, we had a combination of Qatar and Ethiopian last, for this last summer. And two of our people, um, he ran into a big bus between Ethiopian and Qatar. They would not talk to each other or anything. And he ended up, he told me yesterday, I didn't know this, he ended up eating $900 out of his own pocket. He, he did feel it was, because it was, it was not our fault. And it was something that they did you know, outside of his control that he did not know about ahead of time. So I will say that's that's the kind of honesty this guy has. He'll eat something like if he has to, if, if it's not anybody's, you know, if it's not anybody's fault, and he's, he just takes responsibility. But no, all the all the the costs for staying at the project in Malawi, all the uh, guide fees, all the tips, the visas, everything is included in that check. So the, the, the check within the the airline that yep. you pay. Your card. Yeah, we'll get we'll get everybody's credit card information as, as long as you're okay with him, you know, buying the tickets through your credit card and not points, and then he'll he'll book it. He'll book it, and uh, but, but it won't show up on your credit card bill for a few months. <laughs> you have a question? I thought one of the checks included it. No. The deposits. No, they did. No. So, Mike, what um, fundraising? How much are we? What's the expectation? What's the expectation? Yeah. yeah, good question. So it depends on the trip. Like if you're gonna just do a Colorado 14er, we ask everybody, hey, try to raise enough for one well, $1,250, right? It's not a, 
super hard hike, it's, it's not gonna cost you a lot of money, you're kind of dabbling in the thing, um, just $1,250. If you can do one well, that'd be great. Now, if you go to Malawi, um, either on the mission itself, or you actually add on the little four-day hike at the end, again, it's the highest mountain in Malawi is called Mount Malaji, it's only 9,800 feet. And so, and it's gorgeous, it's like an undiscovered gem of uh, Malawi, it's in the southern part of the, of the country, waterfalls everywhere, giant outcrops of granite, like reminds me of Yosemite, it reminds me of Yosemite National Park, believe it or not. I mean, you don't have any half domes, but, um, but for, for the Malawi mission, and then that one, where you add the hike at the end, we, we expect maybe 2,500. And then for um, Kilimanjaro and Everest Base Camp, uh, 5,000. So 5,000 will repair four wells. So if you can raise $5,000, you're gonna get four villages clean water again. And the only one that's a little higher, I think for South America, we'd like 7,500, because that's, uh, that's gonna be a beast, that one there, at least the two, the two last ones. Uh, we went in 2019, only three out of the eight of us made it to the top of, Chim uh, top of um, Cotopaxi, and, the, uh, and then on Chimborazo, nobody made it. But we had a bad, we had a bad um, guide company, and we, we have a much better one this year. He pretty much guarantees, based on how they do it, getting to the top of both of those, of the higher two, uh, the, the highest two of the four <coughs> volcanoes. So does that kind of answer your question? Okay. Um, any other more, questions? One more. Yeah, please. Uh, yeah, what about, uh, they might get COVID shots right now? No. No, um, yeah, none of the countries right now uh, require, they either say vaccinated or you have a negative PCR test before you go. And the U.S. lifted right after Machu Picchu. So before we came back from Machu Picchu in May, early May, everybody had to get tested to come back to the United States. And five out of 27 of us tested positive for COVID. But we had some very um, cooperative doctors, should I say, that uh, created ways of those people getting back. <laughs> so that's all I'm going to say. Um, but uh, yeah, negative PCR 72 hours before um, departure, within 72 like for hours. Most international for, for most right. international trips. But the U.S. has waived it now. So coming back to the U.S., you do not have to get tested anymore. So that's a, you know. And now Ever Space Camp last did last year, 2020, um, hey, 2021. Sorry, I'm getting old. Uh, 2021, um, you had to have the vaccine and. Um, that was a, ended up being a very sad thing for one of our people that was going to go. Uh, but they, they've lifted that now where it's, you, can, you can just do the, the PCR test. Any other, any other questions on this? Or any? So getting back to the sponsorships, if, yep. uh, if you have corporations that might want to, do we, do we funnel them through you or, I mean, because you don't want to, I mean. Well, there's different ways. So if you have a corporation that actually wants to sponsor Wells and make that kind of donation, then they could just go to your link that we're going to give you, and you just, you know, they can okay. just go in there, and, or they can write you a check and give it to me, and I'll send it to Child Legacy. Uh, or if they want to be on the banner, um, that would be a separate kind of donation, and uh, you could tell them, hey, make a check out to Child Legacy. So, so for five hundred dollars or more, you get on this banner, that company, uh, okay, or the church. We have two churches on there. We've got Good City Coffee, we've got a financial company, we've got a drilling company, Doxa Wells. Uh, we've got a whole variety of things here. My, my dentist is on there and my, my, um, my doctor's on there. So I found out that this year, I just need to be bolder. I mean, I know all these people and all these businesses and I've always kind of shied away from asking. So I, I finally decided to get bold. I mean, that was the most number of sponsors we've ever had right there. I think we, we raised more money for corporate sponsors so we can you know, give out the gifts to people than, uh, than we ever have. And so, um, 2022 was a good year. I don't know if you're still telling people this, so I'm hesitant. But if you, you want to whisper to me? If you, <laughs> yeah, I can ask you. Okay. You to keep, the, okay. keep the mic up there. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that if you want. Yeah, go ahead. Tell me. So, it is possible once you finish the fundraising for the wells, right? If you wanted to do a completely separate fundraising for maybe, you know, your parts of your trip or something like that to help with the cost. But it's very, the most important thing is the water well, right? That's why we're doing it. So that is possible. You have to be very clear with people, right? That that's separate. And that means that's less money because both times, I've raised, oh, you know, almost five wells instead yep. of four, not intentionally. 
you know, people just kept giving and it was wonderful. So that will take away money from that. So that's just a decision <coughs> you can make, but it is an option, right? To say, hey, if anybody wants to maybe donate, yeah. give me some miles or something like that to fly there or something like that. Yeah, yeah, thank you, thanks for that. You know, Mike, uh, do you have a sort of a standard template or a letter written that which I could take to different companies as a goal. It's, it, so which yes. is a, which yes. has all the protocols right and yes. it's, it's appropriate and yes. it clearly states that this is for this purpose right. and not to help me. Right, right. No, we, because we you can, want to make that clear. Yeah, we don't have that exactly. Just a one page. We, we can easily do that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we can easily do that. I will say um, one thing. Um, <laughs> Melanie brought up a, a good point about that. Uh, when we do talk about fundraising on uh, on uh, looks like February 4th there. Um, I'll, I, I mean, I'm very fortunate. I was in the oil and gas industry for 43 years, and so I had all these 401ks, I was at five different companies, and so everything kept rolling over into IRAs, and then the money manager suggested putting it into um, tax-free municipal bonds. So I live off of the dividends. I, I don't, I can fund my, I fund my whole trip. And then all my social security that I get, I use for matching. And we're, we're gonna talk about all that kind of stuff. Like if you have if you have extra money, you could offer people, hey, I'm gonna I'm trying to raise $5,000 for clean water climb. And uh, I, I, first of all, I'm paying for my own trip. If you can afford to pay for your own trip, that always perks up people when they hear that. Because a common mission trip for, especially early pe people that are early, first time doing it, maybe it's a high school group or something like that, oftentimes you'll see requests to help fund the trip to go, right? I try to persuade people for these kind of trips that are, you know, big, big trips, uh, epic trips, really. Um, if you can afford to pay for the trip yourself, it's, it's, and tell people that, and they know that all the money is going yeah. to the ministry, I think, and, and we can certainly, you know, um, you know, write something up like that if you, if you want. Yeah, if I could, if I could just say one more thing. Sure. I, I think that's excellent. Yeah. Um, and right now, fourth quarter, we're sort of getting into that. A lot of the planning for 23 is done. Mm -hmm with a lot of companies. So mm -hmm. if you can talk to them now about yeah. something, it's yeah. already in the budget, it's yeah. done. Yeah. So okay. I think, you know, something, something yeah. now would be good. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah, okay. Remind me by text or email to work on something, uh, some uh, short little blurb that explains exactly what you're talking I'll, about. I'll give you a couple of bullet points. So yeah, yeah, I will, also. Yeah, we're gonna look at the website here in a few minutes. But any more questions about this? You know, kind of the schedule, the linking, the payment schedule, the meeting schedule. And, uh, so you all have a copy of it, but your copy has our email addresses and our mobile numbers. So, and Kevin Talley, you see he's leading the first two trips. Um, he's the chairman of the board of Child Legacy. He helped uh, found uh, plant uh, Church Project Winter Park. So you're at, you're at the original church project here, and we have a couple, two or three different plants throughout the country. So he helped, he lives in Colorado half the year. I took him and his wife in 2013, and they just absolutely fell in love with the whole thing, and now he's like chairman of the board. I mean, it's just amazing to see you take somebody on a trip and now the chairman of the board of the whole company, I mean, of the whole charity. So anyway, he's awesome, um, and he would love to hear from you if you want, especially if you want to go to Ecuador. Now he's, he's also doing the first Malawi Malanji trip. He's got a lot of people in Colorado that are very interested and so if for some reason you want to go on that, let me know or let him know his contact information is on there. But be sure to let me he's, know. He's um, a mountain man like, he, yeah. like uh, Mike here. <laughs> That's yeah. all it's it. Yeah. And so and then the next three on there are me. And then we might we, we're, we're going to try to do something in Colorado in either mid mid August to early September range. So both Kevin and Keith Harrison, Keith Harrison was was a pastor in Colorado and he's now here at Church Project. But both of them went on a Voice of Wilderness trip. It's been around for a long time. Chet Russell, if you've ever heard of him, founded it. And he's, he, keeps, he keeps asking me, Mike, why don't you guys come up and use our facility? I mean, he's got a, a cabin, a really nice cabin in Colorado. And, but the only requirement for using it is you have to go on one of their trips. So both Keith and, and Kevin went on a trip this year and they've both been nominated to be staff. So you have to get nominated. And once you're nominated for staff and do some you know, high, high country, uh, back country medical training, you can use that facility for no cost. So we're thinking it, it could very well be that that, you know, if, if they pull something off <coughs> that, that time frame, that'd be, that'd be a great opportunity for, for people that 
you know, they're just not quite there yet to go overseas, but would want to get involved in the ministry. And you could go on there. And they haven't, they're, they're going to talk this week on Tuesday exactly what that trip would look like. And then Ever Space Camp is, is back, back to me then. So, anyway, uh, any more questions about this? Yeah, on, on Ecuador, you said the volcano is around 20,000. Yeah, so I do have a flyer on, on that one. I have two flyers. So, my actually. question was. Uh, how do you acclimatize? For example, I've hiked up to 13, 14,000. Yeah, animals. yeah, it's, uh, let me see if I can find that real quick. Do we need oxygen? You. I'll tell you. No, we don't need oxygen. Um, so, uh, departing the U.S. on the 9th, and then uh, we go into Quito. Quito, the elevation is 9350. So right off the bat, you're going from sea level to 9350. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spend uh, a full day touring Quito. So you're going to spend one day at 9350, just walk around. You'll spend two nights sleeping there. And then, then we do this uh, trek near there, uh, Pinch Pinchancha or something like that, 15,000 feet. And uh, you stay a lodge at 11.8, and then you hike up to 15.7. And then you're gonna be at 12 or 13,000 feet every single day of this of this trip. So and then, sleeping. Yeah, and except sleeping. for one night on Chimborazo, the highest one of the, two, of the four, um, where you do camp and stay in tent. Except for that, you're always going to be in a hotel for all these hikes. So you um, do you do go up to twenty thousand? You said. Yeah, yeah, you go up to twenty thousand. It's twenty thousand five hundred forty nine feet. Okay. Yeah, and the problem we had in two thousand nineteen, the guide company they just didn't get us started early enough. And plus, we were we thought we were starting at a hut at seventeen thousand, and we get there, the hut was closed, and we were at fifteen thousand. So we had to go from. 15,000 to 20,000 from midnight on. There was no way we could make it because when the sun comes up, things start melting. Ice can start melting, and if there's rocks in the ice, it can break away and cause uh, you know damage and, and hurt hurt somebody. So we're hiking up, and all of a sudden they say, "Okay, you got to turn around." I mean, so the sun's not even up yet, and you got to turn around because it's going to start warming up here in another hour. There's no way you're going to make it. So it's like, so this company that he found in in actually in Colorado says, oh, that's not a good way of doing it. We're gonna, we're gonna guarantee you get up. If you're in shape, you're gonna get, we're gonna guarantee you're gonna get up there uh, because we have a whole different way of doing it than they did. So we were disappointed in them that, 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 first, that first time we tried to do it. Any, any other questions? I wanna show a few more videos to What? Must keep going. Okay. So do you, do you carry standby oxygen for that 20,000? Yeah, they'll have, they'll have oxygen. Um, in fact, when we do Kilimanjaro, they always have oxygen. Okay. And, and South America, they carry it too. Yes, yes, they carry. It. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, South America, Kilimanjaro, uh, Everest Base Camp. I don't know about Everest Base Camp, but it's not not as high as any of the other ones. But um, anyway, they, they they may have it. I'm not sure. But this year was so funny because the very beginning of the hike, I see Bruce, our guide, putting in a big tank of oxygen in his pack, and the other three that were with me, I said, look, see, he's putting oxygen in there, but. You know, I've taken 130 people, nobody's ever needed oxygen. I should have never said that, right? Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we went up to the top at 19, and then we went down into the crater, and the plan was to sleep overnight at 18,800 feet. And around 1030, somebody was having 64% oxygen in their blood, oh. and uh, slight dizziness. And so we talked a lot and finally decided, let's just go down. So we went down from starting at midnight all the way down to Kosovo camp. Yeah. yeah. And, and then he put him on oxygen, and he, he, he kind of went first with one of the guides, and then I caught up with him, and he's got oxygen on, and he's telling me, Mike, I feel like I'm in heaven. This feels so good. <laughs> so it, was, it was pretty funny that, you know, I said that, that nobody's ever needed oxygen, and it was, here's one guy that did. So we're going to do the trip a little differently this year for Kilimanjaro. I'll just tell you right now, we're going to go to the summit. We're gonna go down into the crater. We're gonna walk up to the ash pit, which is the very center of the crater. It's unbelievable, it's incredible to look at. And, uh, and then uh, we're gonna walk down into, on top of a glacier. It's really easy to crawl, crawl on, uh, walk on top of this glacier called Furtwangler Glacier. So, and then we're gonna go down. So we're not gonna camp overnight in, in, in the crater, but we're gonna get all the, um, the fun of, of seeing everything in the crater. So that was what Bruce came up with. He said, we'll leave at three o'clock in the morning from Kosovo camp. We'll summit around 11 a.m. We'll go down into the crater, see those two things I just mentioned, and then go down to Kosovo Camp, sleep, and then the next day we go out. So that's how it's gonna be this year. We, we keep tweaking it. Every, every year is another little tweak to make it better. Okay, let's uh, minimize that. And uh, no, 
Uh, yeah, you can close it. Actually, you can close it. Okay, let's go to the videos. No, 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 you were there. Oh, yeah, right there. Okay, let's do, um, let's do Aconcagua. So that, that's in the Andes, and that's from a 2018 trip. Yeah, let's just do that. You can kind of see, uh, you know, maximize it, and then, uh, yeah. So you, it's a three minute video. You can kind of see what the, what the Andes look like. I'm not sure, I don't like the music that much, but it's okay. <laughs> That's the Andes, which is almost as spectacular as the Himalayas. Not quite, but close. So there's uh, there's Lisa Talley there, Kevin in the back with the sunglasses. That was our guy. Well, he was a young whippersnapper, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, quite young. So a lot of the a lot of the gear is taken up by. Uh, Donkeys. I think that's Aconcagua right there, the white. And we went on an acclimatization hike. So this is in Peru? This this is in Argentina. Oh, okay. So Aconcagua is the highest mountain outside the Himalayas and the highest mountain in the western and the southern hemisphere. This is what our other so he's a local guy. The other the young one you saw earlier, he's a from an American, so they always have an American and they have a local guide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have all these different mountains though. So now we're coming into, uh, we're coming into Plaza de Mulas, which is the second highest base camp outside of Everest Base Camp. And it was snowing ferociously. We thought, oh my gosh, this is gonna be terrible. We're only in Fort, but the next day the sun was out I took this little time lapse of wanting to get above the camp, show you, show you what it looked like. And then we went on an acclimatization hike. So we, there's a lot of, a lot of that's going to happen for the Ecuador trip that, uh, this year as well. Um, so you see, we have a different kind of boot there for for the trips that involves. Those are called penitentes, and it's really you know like leftover snow and. The sun melts them into those uh, those uh, shapes. And you, you, sometimes we see them on Kilimanjaro too. That's one of the high camps, maybe 16, 17, 18,000, somewhere like that. The guys cook our food for us. And the sunsets are just unbelievable. Unbelievable. And then we did a little training with our ice boots and crampons. You see we have crampons there and ice axes. Um, there's nothing really that technical about it, though. These are, a lot of it's for, you know, if you're walking on snow, you should have crampons, right? Just, you don't want to slip. You might hit an icy patch and then go down the mountain. That was another group. Very impressed how disciplined that group looked. <laughs> all, all snuggled together. That's at the top of Aconcagua with Kevin and myself. And just before we got up there, the cloud moved in. Otherwise, it would have been an incredible view. And then we head down. Anyway, that's, that's kind of what the Andes looks like. And we had a choice of hiking 5,000 feet down from Plaza de Mulas or taking a helicopter. We decided to spend a few extra bucks because we were a day behind. We, there was a weather day where the weather was bad, and they said we're not gonna we're gonna have to hold tight and not go up to Aconcagua tomorrow. We're gonna spend the whole day in camp. And uh, I tell you, it's uh, it's cold. It's cold up there for sure. <laughs> the nice thing about this Ecuador trip only one night of camping. Aconcagua is every night. So that's why we do it. That's Jeff Rogers, the founder of uh, Child Legacy. And me, I guess that's me. Kind of strange, strange looking guy from four years and five years ago. <laughs> okay, um, let's, let's do it. So that's, that's a, yeah. let's, let's do, um, let's do this CLI Malawi Auditorium one on, on the far right. So this one's gonna be more like Child Legacy. Yeah, it's gonna be about Child Legacy. Um, it was, um, we usually say Malawi is a God-fearing nation, like a Christian nation, but um, 
basically it's not, I think. Because when I go to the communities, when I go to the villages, when I go to the communities, what I see there, mm -mm, it, it, it's far from, I mean, believing that this is a God-fearing nation, like a, a, a Christian nation. And I'm always amazed how people can become so embedded into their traditional beliefs, cultural beliefs. My heart was moved by so many people who sort of aimlessly and hopelessly walked around looking for something that they could tangibly grab a hold of that would offer them opportunity. Or as I like to say, these are people who are really looking for hope. The thing about hope is that it's the initiative that drives anybody to move from where they're at to where they can be as a people, as a people group, as a society, as a nation. This land where we are, like Child Legacy, used to be a rejected land. Some people used to call it like a cursed land. And it's a miracle to be a fatal land. We've brought in a standard that says there is hope for your future. You look at pictures of what we're doing here in Malawi. <clears throat> it doesn't look anything like 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago in Malawi or Southern Africa. I wouldn't imagine how this community would be without child legacy. We are able to have a platform where we can teach the real word of God from the Bible and we are able to preach Jesus. I've seen so many mothers coming to Christ. Some can even receive Jesus on the sick bed because when I'm to give anesthesia, I've, I've heard them saying, Doctor, can you just help me pray? So we said, yes, yes. But to who do we pray? I said, to God, of course. So I start from there and then talk about Jesus. And then I see them receiving Jesus, even on the sick bed, and I thank God for the grace that He has bestowed on us. When there's economic growth, social development, and then the, the best thing, the, the most important thing, is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Everywhere we repair well, we teach the gospel. I have two pastors on staff at our hospital. We do Bible trainings twice a week. They move among the ward when there's a delivery and spend time ministering to these people, spreading the gospel, bringing the faithfulness of God's word so that they have a hope in him to trust in. Then soon, they're not trusting in man, but they're trusting in God. And that's real hope. And that's the hope that allows a person to drive forward. want to go to Malawi and then you also may want to do the hike of Mount Malanje so it adds just a little bit more to the trip and hopefully this one will work. So Mount Malanje is in the southern part of the country and uh, that's, that's the sign you see when you come into the project site. This is inside the church. I need blood. So they will never take my blood in the United States because they said, oh, you went to Africa, we can't take the blood. And then I go to Africa and I get my blood. <laughs> <laughs> so we start off with, uh, you know, we fly in, we go to the project, and then we flew down to a, a park called Rijeti National Park in the southern part of the country. Kevin and Lisa said, I don't think that damage on that tree is from elephants. 
online. I don't know if you all know about Grace School Theology. It's up there on just 242, really close to us. And that's one of their big emphases at that, at that school, the theology school, is, is helping people become pastors online that can't afford to come here and that sort of thing. So it keeps costs down. So 
In 2019, uh, I was asking him some questions through WhatsApp, and he asked me, well, when is your meeting? And I said, uh, well, tomorrow at such and such o'clock. And he goes, well, I'll, I'll be in the woodlands. So he literally showed up at one of our meetings from Nepal. I had no idea he happened to be there on that day. Uh, the other thing is, um, he has been thrown in prison in the past because of evangelism. So you, like I said, you can't openly evangelize. So he decided after he got out of prison, I don't know how long he was in there, that he would um, start this guide company and he would use that to help uh, fund planting of churches. So he's planted over 200 churches. Him and people that have, been, have planted the churches under him have planted over 200 churches in Nepal. So he's got a really great ministry. And one of the things we're gonna do this year is we're gonna have an extra day to um, uh, interact with some of his uh, people at some of these churches. So I'm excited about what that what that's gonna look like. Uh, pray to encourage them and they can pray to encourage us. But the other thing is the government of Nepal just on October 1st, so 15, 16 days ago, do not allow domestic flights out of Kathmandu anymore. So the two choices are you have to get a helicopter, which is more expensive, or you drive three and a half hours to this other airport and then take a 15 minute flight. So it's going to, the cost next year is definitely going to be higher than this year. The, co the chopper will cost, this year it's going to be 400. He estimates next year 600 adding to the trip. So what we're going to do this year is we're going to take a chopper to, Cam to uh, Lukla, do the hike, and then on the way back we're going to uh, take the flight to the other airport and then do the drive back and uh, keep the cost down a little bit. So it'll be interesting to see how that, how that all uh, works out. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, yeah, let's pull up the website. Um, it should be at the bottom of this, so minimize the, the, the hit Safari right there. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, enlarge that. This is the, the Clean Water Climb website, and we've got a lot of things up there. You, uh, at the top controls a lot of it. Um, why climb, support a climber, join a trip, past trips, testimonials, partners, blog, backpack, child legacy. So that will link you to the main, you know, Clean Water Club, when people donate to your fundraising, they're donating to Child Legacy. Child Legacy is the 501c3. Um, but support a climber, so you can see, gee. Okay, that's, so those are all the teams we had for 2022. Um, if you go to Multiple Mountains, go down to Multiple Mountains, and there you go. And uh, you'll see some of us are doing more than one hike, so we have a separate team called Multiple Mountains. And you can read a little bit there, you can click on Click on mine if you want to see a little bit more of my background. Uh, scroll down. Yeah, so then there's a bio down there. And, and that'll tell you a little bit about my story and, and how this all came about. Um, and it's long, but it's, and then you can take a link, get a link to my fundraising letter, but don't worry about that right now. Okay, so you go back to the top, join a trip. So we still have Everest Base Camp up there. That's coming in two weeks. We thought we'd just leave it up there. But then the, those, there's flyers for each of those. Um, you can click on um, any one of them. And there's been little changes after I talked to the travel agent yesterday, so these are not quite exactly up to date yet. So this is when we did it with a whole bunch of people from Church Project, went in 2018, June. There's Jason on the far right. Uh, Kevin Talley's in the middle behind the sign. Uh, Jason's brother, Matt Shepard, is just to the left of Kevin there. And anyway, we had a, it was a great, uh, and then and, uh, Jason's, one of Jason's sons and daughters are on there. But anyway, that's the flyer. You can read all that stuff down there. But you can, you can kind of see, you know, these, some of these dates are, are wrong now. Like for Kilimanjaro, I say commitment date, January 21st. We're going to get these updated pretty soon. Uh, that's now February 4th because I realized, wait, I'm in, I'm in, I'm, I'm in Ecuador on that day. I can't have a, a team meeting <laughs> when I'm in Ecuador. I guess I could, but uh Anyway, an estimated costs, and those haven't changed that much. Um, I am waiting for something from uh, Zara Tours in, in, uh, in uh, Tanzania for Kilimanjaro trip to see if that, and it says 11 plus people. Okay, one thing about, about Zara and everything, that price won't go up much if we don't have 11. I mean, you're talking about $100 maybe. You know, I mean, it just depends on how many people we end up having, but don't be too scared about you have to have 11 people, okay? But we have quite a bit of interest this year. Um, so at least one person is already has already paid for it. She was going to go last. She was going to go this year, and she hurt her knee at Machu Picchu. So she's now already paid up for the trip for 2023. Um, okay, go back, go back. To the main page. Uh, yeah, main page. Yeah, right. The, you can kill. Yeah. Okay, now go to um, partners. 
So you can tell partners. So you can tell anybody that might want to be a corporate sponsor or community community partner to get on, get their logo on our banner. Well, they'll get pictures of, of the logo at the top of Kilimanjaro and, and individuals. So we'll do individual banners for each uh, sponsor plus the big banner, and then everybody signs the banners. So you go on any trip; these same banners go on all the trips, and we'll we'll all sign them, and then we'll give them. To the, to the company or the church or whoever were, were the sponsors. That's Melanie right there <laughs> to, the, to the left. Um, okay, so let's, so that, okay, then we have all the logos uh, for this year. And then if you go further down, all the logos for all the companies that have been involved since day one. So you can see there's a whole lot. I mean, Chick-fil-A, you've heard of a lot of these, Gullo Auto, Blades of Glory, well, maybe you have not heard of Blades of Glory, but anyway. Okay, now go to um, Backpack. Backpack is one you probably want to, you can look at uh, any time, but there's so much information here. Like, you know, frequently asked questions and goals, right? And then start here. Um, we have a new waiver system. I mean, we're, once you sign up, and then you have, to, you have to do a waiver. And uh, we have an online way of doing it now, uh, a, a PDF system. And it, it, it Bill helped me set it up. And so all we need is your email address and which trip you're going on. We send you a link, and, and it'll, it'll remind you every day until you fill it out. I think it'll drive you crazy, and then finally, you, okay, I better fill this out. Don't stop getting these emails. Um, and then Africa preparation, we've got something in there about going without hurting. Um, there's a book out called When Helping Hurts. Sometimes we, we go in thinking that, oh, let's just bring in thousands of pairs of shoes. Um, what was the name of that company that did that? Tom's Shoes or something? Tom's Shoes. So they had this idea that you buy a pair of shoes, they'll send a pair of shoes to a poor country. Well, they found out that they were driving the local shoe people out of business. So the best intentions sometimes can actually hurt. Uh, so anyway, there's a whole discussion there about when helping hurts, so we have to be careful about that. Preparing for your trip to Africa is great. Uh, vaccinations, prescriptions, and medical information. I mean, really, as far as vaccinations, you know, you need to be up to date on your, your normal childhood ones, right? Every 10 years they say you need a booster on those things, some, some of them. But then typhoid is one, especially for Africa, that is good to get. And it's only, it's good for two or three years. And then prescriptions only, you know, a lot of just prescriptions that you'd want to have in case you've got a bacteria, a sinus infection or something like that. Uh, my doctor will give me all those prescriptions, even if I'm not sick. He just, he knows that I go on this trip. And so he, he just gives me the prescriptions. And I can send you to him if your doctor won't do it, because he'll do it. He knows, he knows what I do. He donates, so uh, he, he knows what it's all about. And then vaccinations, other than typhoid, I, I can't, and typhoid's gonna be a lot cheaper at Kroger's than it is at your doctor, most likely. Uh, then those are the five stories we share um, in, in Malawi. And then lots of information about the hike and preparing for the hike, you know, your weights and uh, physical training all kinds of equipment lists, but we have meetings for all this. But if you want to read ahead of time, this is a great place to, to just read all this stuff. And then fundraising, you see there's just tons of stuff out there in fundraising. I mean, I have found the three most effective ways of fundraising um, in terms of sending a letter. You, see, you just send a letter out, a hard copy, because people have a hard time throwing that away versus an email, right? Emails, it's easy to fall off the bottom of the screen. You send them a map, and you send them a sample well report for a well that was repaired in Malawi, and that really grabs people's attention. Oh my gosh, look at all these wells they've uh, repaired, and look at this well report. Uh, eight people decided to follow Christ. You know, It's got all that information in the well report. There's examples of them from 2011 to 2021. There's water well report samples. You can, you can print them and, and send them with your fundraising letter. But somebody told me once the key to successful fundraising, I've heard a few things, but one of them says fundraising rule number one this was at a, at a conference I went to about fundraising. Fundraising rule number one is people give to people, not to projects. And I first thought about that. It took me a while, and then he explained it. He said, well, there may be 100 organizations doing great water work in Africa countries, right? But they don't know which one to turn to. But they know you, and they trust you, and so they, they support you. So it's, it, that's, that's where that means. People give to people, not to projects. Um, though, you know, I mean, I, it is a, it's a good project, though, too, so you can't completely discount that. But people trust you that you've done the research. You want to, you're investing your time and money to go on this trip, so it must be, it must be important. I'm going to give and support you. And you're already paying for your trip, too. So um, the other thing was somebody told me, what's the secret to my success? Mike, the secret to your success is you keep doing the same thing every year. 
Now that's not necessarily gonna to apply to any of you, but then the other thing you said was, um, the key to your success is you're persistent. And I thought, oh, well, man, I'm a pest. So I had gotten a $5,000 donation, and I immediately wrote him an email thanking him. This was like a month or two before the trip. I said, oh, thank you so much, Andrew. I really appreciate it. You're gonna you're sponsor five wells. That was when it was $1,000 well. And he goes, man, I, he was apologizing for not sending it sooner. And I go, I go, um, man, why, I don't understand why you're apologizing. And, and then, you know, he said, well, you know, every time your email came in uh, once a month, I usually send out an email once a month on this kind of stuff. It, it, it went to the bottom of my screen because I was running off to a meeting. I had five voicemails to answer. Um, I had other emails that were pressing. My, 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 uh, my desk was covered with stuff. And... Um, and I said, oh, and he said, well, but, but, you, but your email came in just right today. I didn't have any obligations to do anything. And so when your email came in, I could make the donation. I, my time was free. So he said, no. And I said, am I being a pest? No, you just, you just regularly, gently remind people. And, and then, I, so I do one hard copy letter a year. I do maybe a, every month some kind of email. And then and maybe every week to do some Facebook thing, you know. Um, and because, and, you know, frankly, you don't have emails for everybody or you don't have mat addresses for everybody. So you, you use that whole broad spectrum of, uh, of fundraising and you'll be successful. Okay, I'm trying to think, was there anything else? I have the business cards up here, uh, the magnets, pens, if you'd like one as reminders. I've got flyers for all the trips up here if you don't have one already. And, I, and then, um, oh, the soccer ball, I forgot. So the soccer ball is called a One World Football, and it used to be you could buy a box of 10 of those, and now they're requiring you to buy a box of 100, if you're lucky. So we're investigating how we can get a shipment of 100 soccer balls to Malawi, because they take up a lot of space in the house. <laughs> so, but they're awesome, because they, you don't use needles, and you don't use a pump or anything. They're, they've got foam in them, and uh, you, you can't even, can't compress them even, but they're great. They're so durable, and they're made particularly for um, for poor countries that that where kids like to play soccer, and they're really tough on them, right? So we try to bring we try to give out two at every village well repair that we do, one one for the men and one for the women. Uh, the women like to play netball, and uh, so they're throwing the ball kind of like basketball without bouncing it, and whereas the men play soccer and the boys play soccer. Uh, one more thing. So, I'm just just touching on this. So this is my day pack that I've been using ever since 2011. It's still alive and kicking. Uh, a gator's handy. So we're going to go over all this in the equipment meeting, but I just thought I'd give you a, a flavor. Oh, it's one other thing I want to show you too. It's on the table. So that's a band, you know, a neck gator that you can pull over your nose to, for dust. It can, it can be dusty on some of these hikes in different places. A good set of hiking boots, of course, is important. Um, I, I like, I always have a fanny pack for snacks and miscellaneous things, uh, my phone sometimes. Um, a good wide brimmed hat is important, especially at the higher elevations. Um, the sun can give you a sun headache and you're thinking, oh, do I have an altitude headache? And it may just be a sun headache. We had somebody that got a, a migraine and she just had a baseball cap on, and I, you know, I, I said, you know, you're supposed to have a wide-brimmed hat, and we think it was the sun that triggered it, and so she had to go down just because she didn't have a wide-brimmed hat for 10 bucks, you know? And then for water, I mean, some people use the water bottles. This is a, um, a Camelback, and uh, it's three, this is three liters. I recommend getting a three-liter one. I mean, you can use the water bottles, but this goes in your pack, and the hose comes out the side, so you don't have to bother people to get the water bottle out of your pack. So uh, that's what I recommend for, for water. And I think that's, that's all I have in here. And then I always, I always hang my, my donor list on my back. I tell people I'm taking their names up to the top of whatever. I show my progress. Um, and we've got Excel spreadsheets. You can create your own of this if you want um, type of thing. Um, and the last thing was, when we went in 2018 and, uh, to Kilimanjaro and Jason Shepard uh, went with us, he, he wrote a, a, a devotional uh, for us, and it's based on the life of Abraham. It's really good, and uh, we adapt it for different hikes, depending on the length of the hike, but uh, everybody will get one of these devotionals, and I encourage you to read each day along the hike, and it literally starts at the airport before we depart. 
Um, and I would consider, you know, going through it. There's some questions at the beginning, what I hope to accomplish on this trip, how I hope to come home differently, my biggest concerns are, my biggest excitement, and something I'll remember about this person. So you can list everybody's names and, and try to remember something about that person. And then there's the itinerary, and then each day is a different part of, uh, of Abraham taking his son Isaac to be, um, well, leaving the land that you know God tells him to leave, and he didn't even know where he was going, right? So, uh, which is really, I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of parallels here, to, especially if you've never been to some of these countries that uh, we do these trips in, you know? Um, I think the very first uh, section is uh, day one is, um, find it here, depart. The Lord said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, and your father's household and go to the land I will show you. And uh, principle, there will be moments in life God will call us to leave and, and to wait. Discussion here about you know leaving and waiting, and uh, he didn't know where he was going to go. God just told him to leave. <laughs> so uh, to a place I'll show you. So anyway, this is really good. So it can, it can you know it can bring out some pretty deep things uh, from people as as you go through that. Um, but any any, uh, any questions? It's uh, it's three o'clock. I was hoping to end this around three. So that was outstanding. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah, you, Raj. really, yes. Your so, organization is amazing. So Raj is a friend of a friend of a friend. Yes. So I, I met this lady through Child Legacy, Sarah Banal, and then she had a friend named Darren Beard, and Darren Beard and uh, Raj go to the same church. Sugarland? Uh, Kingsland. King, Kingsland. Kingsland Baptist and okay. Katie. Uh, and Katie, wow. okay. So that's... And that's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I want to meet him. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> in person, yeah. he gave a little bit. Yeah. So what trip would you think about? You know, <clears throat> I have to go back and see and look what I have planned. Uh, I was thinking about uh, Ecuador, but the you volcano. You might, might like to do Ecuador. Right. That'd be awesome. Right. And uh, <clears throat> I'll, I'll, I'll have to, there's so many interesting things. Yeah, you know, there's a lot. Yeah. They, they, they want to do Kilimanjaro. Okay, yeah. we'll set on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so anybody that goes to Kilimanjaro from the church project, is gets to do this. Um, we we have a flag, and every person that's that, at least at the time we're going to church project. Sometimes people move away, but we bring a flag up to the top of Kilimanjaro, for, and all the church project people will sign it cool. at the end of the yeah. trip. So cool. your, your your names will be on here. Cool. <laughs> and yours. So which one are you thinking of? Uh, I'm I'm not sure yet. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, too many choices. Uh, I'm very indecisive. So. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. I thought it was just kill the jar. I'm like, oh, there's so many of that. Yeah. Know. There's a lot of things. But I, you know, I kind of recommend, you know, not that I don't want to discourage you from doing Ecuador, is is to go to the, one of the Africa trips first yeah. because then you get to go see the ministry mm -hmm. and, and participate in that and just see the project and just see it's like the the people. You heard Johan say, I think it was it was still vocal then. That everybody around there said the land was cursed before Child Legacy showed up, and now they say it's a place of light. Mm -hmm. You can imagine that means more than one thing, right? I mean, we have solar lights and stuff at night, um, but it could also represent the, the light of Christ, mm -hmm. you know. So I think that's so cool. They went from a land curse to a place of light. Wow. Yeah. I would say it's like no other mission trip you will ever go anywhere because you're going to go on safari, you're going to see God's creation. country in the world and it's just you know and there's guys out there with rats on the end of stick yeah. trying to make money selling yeah. on the road that's the they kind call, of poverty you're talking about yeah. they call my son a stick you'll be my we son. drive from the airport to child legacy it's about an hour drive and you'll see these guys with these sticks and if you look closely there's little mice on them you see the tail sticking out and people eat them that, 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 that the poverty you know, the poverty is so great that that's one of the ways they get their protein is eating mice it's crazy but you know that's that's what they have, so they make they make they're industrious and they make use of that. And, and you get to do the well repair, which is really cool, and to see how they do that. And then now we have these church planting, and that's yeah. one thing I didn't get to participate in. Uh, 
church service, they don't have to stuff. And that we didn't have time. So we weren't there on that uh, Sunday. Right. Wow. Yeah, so we always, the dates of the trip are, are, are especially picked so that we are in Malawi the last day on a Sunday, the last full day. So we can go to the church, relax, write up critiques with suggestions and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's real important to, to have that last day and to be at the church celebrating the Lord together with them. And as an old farmer boy, Cal Legacy is cool because, I mean, I mean it's so, so much more now. Yeah. Bamboo, macadamia, nut trees, all the farming and everything that's just the inputs that are going into this hospital and all these women there and all the solar and the wind energy, that stuff. I love the technical stuff of all that. Bill, Bill went and uh, Bill and I used to work at Southwestern Energy together. He's still there, but he went in 2018. We, we actually went three times in 2018. We went early June, and then I didn't come home. I just flew back to Tanzania and met them coming from America. And then we went on the second one in June, spilling over into July. And then I then I went back in September with another group. So we just had uh, that was that was like a, that was an amazing year. That was the year I had to retire. So, I mean, I had already gone to Aconcagua, and that was a three-week trip. This one's two weeks, right before. I had gone to Aconcagua, it was a three weeks. I went to California to visit family, and then I did an Appalachian Trail segment. That was two weeks. So I, I used all five weeks of vacation up, plus um, a week of uh, leave without pay. And then I had three Kilimanjaro trips staring at me. I thought, oh, I, I gotta retire, you know? So I went to HR, and, my, my financial advisor said, don't, don't, don't give them a date of retirement, just ask them if you can get on the, the severance package list. And uh, because the company was selling a big asset called the Fayetteville Shale in Arkansas, which I was, had, had worked on for quite a few years there, and he said, just ask if you can be on the, on the, on the uh, you know, get, get laid off and get a, a package. So I, I felt a little guilty about it, and they said, yeah, no, just, just what's the worst they're gonna say is no, right? So, um, and that's, that's exactly what I did. I went to him and I said, would it be fair to ask if you put on the layoff list? And they said, Mike, it's not only fair, but we would have been surprised if you didn't. <laughs> so that was like a green light. Go on your trips, come back, and we'll figure everything out. So. That was awesome moment. We were on Kilimanjaro. Yeah. And I had one of those, like he does, in reach, so I could get text messages. Oh. And my buddy at work, Josh Andreas, he goes, they're having layoffs. <laughs> I said, Mike, I don't know if we got jobs. He's like, no problem. No problem. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, I'm hoping I'm hoping I'm laid off. You know, so. it's like, give it up. What are you gonna do? We're all talking about nothing. And you have to just give it up to God. Just uh, you know, do yeah. more about it. These are the Chichewa Bibles. We give out um, three Bibles in each village too. We, we give one to the chief and his family, and then we give one to like the leader of some of the men and the leader of some of the women. So, you know, I've got the flyers up here. Any more questions? Um, so if is there uh, the ability to do to do the all three, like the Kilimanjaro, and then do the small one afterward? Yes, we could. So that would basically be yeah. a month. Yeah, if you wanted to do that. I mean, if you really wanted to do Melange at the same time, that that Melange, that'd be one, two, that'd be yeah, that'd be that'd be fine. Because what, what when when we arrive in Malawi after the hike. Those that are just going to Malawi, right. Right? they don't want to hike, they, but they want to see the project. And, and uh, you know, we, we brought two ladies this year that went last year. They loved it so much they came this year, and now they want to go again next year. So Jason Pierce will go, and several other people will probably go just to Malawi. And so we'll meet together at the airport. Or in fact, we'll actually meet, I forget if it's Dar es Salaam. I can't remember, I can't remember what airport. We'll, we'll all come in at the same time. I, I told them that's what's great about working with this uh, travel agent. He knows that we do things that we need. Okay, we've got people coming from two different places. We need to be here at the same time, at the same you know date. So yes, and so we'll do the Malawi part as planned. And then really for you guys, if you want to do that, we just add maybe six days yeah. Yeah, that, to, to do another mountain, which yeah. is going to be far easier. You're, you're going to be so acclimated, you'll be wondering up this mountain. Because yeah. <laughs> it's only 9,800 feet. But you only get over the oil, yeah. Yeah, something to think about. Yeah. That'd be awesome. I would like to have a group go to, go to Melange. I mean, it was so beautiful. Yeah. How many people went last night? It was just three of us. It was yeah. Kevin and Lisa Italia and I, and I, and we, it was kind of like a scouting trip. I said, let's see what this is gonna be like and see if it makes sense to bring people, and it certainly did. But, and then, of course, that was 2000, so 2020, everything kind of yeah, fell apart. Yeah. In 2021, I just couldn't get any momentum for it. 
but um, this year I'm, I'm gonna be trying to push it a little harder. So that would basically be July 11th through August uh, 8th? Yes. Not quite a month. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Man, I'd love to I'd love to do Melange again. Okay, any other questions? Uh, flyers. What flyers do you guys want? Just tell me what you want. To, I've got them all here. And there might be some little tiny changes. So here's here, here's Ecuador. Let me just lay them out over here. Ecuador, um, Everest Base Camp. Kilimanjaro, and then this is the mission trip with also the add-on of um, Melange for anybody who is, you know, even interested in that. I mean, you might be interested in that one too. I don't know. How much time you can get off? Mm -hmm. How much time can you get off? Uh, I don't know. I feel like it's a, it's a mission trip stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I feel yeah. like there's probably a lot yeah. more risk there, right? Yeah, probably. It's a good card to hold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did everybody else got the handouts that I gave? Did everybody sign this um, piece of paper? Deborah, Deborah signed in. Jerry, okay. Greg. It might only shut down the. Yeah, yeah, you can shut down. Okay. And Mike, I can show.